don't have very nice long South nails. Africa's rate of intimate femicide, the killing of women by their partners, is five times the global average, according to the World Health Organization. And one big driver of that, they argue, is the nation's high rate of gun ownership. That's the argument from South African legislators pushing this bill, that fewer guns in public hands has statistically led to fewer gun deaths. Gun owners and advocates disagree. They say it matters who is holding the gun. One particularly vocal group consists of women who say the constant threat of violence calls for self-defense. South Africa has been called the rape capital of the world by Interpol because of the nation's high rate of sexual violence. And President Cyril Ramaphosa recently described gender-based violence as the nation's second epidemic. This 33-year-old woman asked us to conceal her face and use a pseudonym, Foxy, out of fear for her safety. That's because in the space of three months, she said, she was raped multiple times. First by a gun-toting home intruder, and then by the friend she confided in. Both men had guns and used them to terrorize her. Now she wants one too, and is seeking a license for self-defense. Because I'll have it with me, I feel like I'll be empowered, you know, and should anything that is life-threatening happen, obviously I'll try, like they said, I'll try and get out of the situation, but if I can't, then I'll, I'll do what I can to save my life. It, it, it basically could be the dividing line between life and death. So I feel like it would help empower me to know that I don't have to give in. If I can't get out of it, then there's a way to disable them from doing what they're trying to do to, to me or anybody around me at, at that time. Lynette Oxley, a Johannesburg firearms dealer, is the founder of Girls on Fire, a group that represents female gun owners. She trains women to think of guns as a deterrent. If you talk to all of the lady firearm owners that I've spoken to through the years, they say it actually makes you less aggressive because you're aware that if you do take that step, it's, it's a big step. It's not something that you want to do. So it makes you actually think about scenarios and the big thing is get out of the scenario if you can. But if you are attacked, then obviously that is your best way of defending yourself against a bigger, stronger perpetrator. But the very valid fears women have can't necessarily be solved with more guns, says gender-based violence expert Mohamed Brody. I really do understand, as a woman living in South Africa, how vulnerable you feel and how we imagine, because we're told by Hollywood as well as by gun owner lobbies, that having a firearm on your person is the one thing that's going to make you safe. But the data shows us that firearms make all of us anything but safe. And the most important step that we could take to improve women's safety in South Africa would be to disarm more men, not to arm more women. Brody argues that if the goal is to protect women, there are other interventions, like better street lighting, more community safety initiatives, and burglar bars on homes. All of these women agree on the actual problem here. South African girls and women feel unsafe on the streets and in their homes every day. But are guns the answer? That's the question facing Parliament in coming months. Anita Paul, VOA News, Johannesburg.